all know that uh, ma uh, masks are used coming into church and uh, for visitation, but if you feel comfortable removing the mask or lowering the mask where you are seated, you're welcome to do so. Um, I'll be periodically putting it on, taking it off, when I'm up here in the sanctuary during the celebration. For those who will be coming up to receive Holy Communion, we do ask that you wear the mask. Just receive on the, on the hand and then lower the mask to receive Jesus. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to leave it up to your personal judgment regarding your sense of safety regarding the wearing of the mask. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, in communion with the Holy Spirit be with all of you. I bless the body of dead with the holy water that recalls his baptism of which St. Paul writes. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Jesus by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his death. On the day of Ed's baptism, be put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, May he be clothed with glory.
O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Ed Langenberg, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. God who quits us, who will condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all of these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach, and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. There are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We certainly want to welcome all of you to St. George Church on this afternoon when, as I mentioned earlier, we remember it in a special way and commend it to the Lord during this Mass of Christian burial. Present it to the Lord as a worthy servant and certainly through the waters of baptism as one of his adopted sons. <clears throat> Many of you probably are not Catholic family or friends, and so during the time the celebration of Mass, there will be times when Catholics know to kneel. We do not ask that of, nor expect that of, our non-Catholic family members, friends, and guests. Please feel comfortable remaining seated during those times. There will be uh, uh, times when we all stand, maybe for song, 
or for prayer, and I'll invite you to do so when it's appropriate. I certainly, uh, on your behalf, want to call to mind, of course, Ed's sister Geneva, who could not be here, and his good friend Jim Frazel, who also could not be here, um, both uh, senior in their age to Ed, of course, and uh, would be, uh, the journey would be difficult for them uh, at this time. But we hold them in our uh, uh, minds right now and in our hearts because we know they want to be here very much and they join us in spirit. And certainly, of course, to Ed's nieces, to Debbie and Peggy and Mary, to your spouses, to the great nieces and nephews who are here, and even the great greats that are here, uh, thank you for honoring your uncle and your great uncle in this way. <clears throat> One of the things uh, that I recall about Ed is he really lived the second week, okay? Uh, he was, at least in the uh, few years that I knew him, I knew him for five, five years, a little over five years now, he was a perfect gentleman and always very gracious and warm and kind uh, to me when I would go visit him in this home there in Drake. And so he embodied some of the things that Mike shared with us in the second reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Just a, a reminder, he was kind, he was humble, he was gentle and patient. And uh, I think that uh, it's safe to say, more than likely, those are characteristics that define the man throughout his life. You know, when he was younger, and of course, even in his old age. But uh, still, it's something to think about. Whenever we say farewell to somebody close to us, or somebody that's meaningful to us, we try and learn from their example. We try and sort of uh, stand parallel to them and see how we measure up. And maybe some of us need to take to heart what Paul says to the people of Colossae and see how gentle and kind and humble and patient we are with the people around us, whether they be related to us or whether they be co-workers or neighbors to us. And maybe uh, where we might have to make some improvement if necessary. These are actually opportunities to do that when we gather on occasions such as this. But see, he embodied these virtues. That's what we refer to them as virtues. In other words, there was something very positive in uh, the definition of Ed as a man, and as certainly as a follower of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but the other thing that comes out uh, in my memory of Ed, that he was so uh, welcoming to people, to his home, and in today's Gospel reading, we have Jesus talking about preparing a place for us in eternal life, preparing a place so that he can come back and take us with him. And the image of home is so very, very important to us as we grow up. Hopefully, for many of us here, we remember it as a place where love is learned, where care is received, where compassion is shown, where kindness is extended. Those are some of the things also, not only defining a person, but a home. And that's the kind of description in many regards we have in heaven, which is very comforting, and at the same time, very inspiring for us to live up to these expectations. And that's the kind of place that Ed, probably, that Ed uh, enters into now, but also it's the kind of place that Ed uh, provided for people who visited him in his home. And home is a place where we feel all those good things. It's also a place where we feel like we belong. We don't have to present a passport. We don't have to present a visa. It's a place where we belong, home. And so we, in a sense, have a right to, us, to it. And what does Jesus say to us in other teachings? He says, um, anyone who... Uh, takes up his cross and follows me, becomes uh, my disciple, and begins the journey towards heaven. So we have a claim toward that. 
when we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And we honor a man who did exactly that throughout his life. And one of the distinctive characteristics of Jesus when we read the story of his life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was he was a man of service. What did Jesus say uh, on the occasion when he got up from washing the disciples' feet? As I have done, so must you do. I came not to be served, but to serve. That defined Jesus Christ. That's supposed to also define a follower of Jesus Christ, one of his disciples. And when I reflect on uh, Ed's life, he did that, whether it be as an accountant through his uh, employment and through his um, uh, work with, you know, not just numbers, but work with people as an accountant, he provided a service to people and to his employer as well. But also, uh, being a, uh, a, an amateur historian, Ed was very proud to be a, a citizen of Gascony County, and particularly, of course, of Drake. And uh, he uh, associated himself with and become, became a member of the Gascony Historical Society, and participated not only in meetings, but even in leadership in the society. And so he was of service to the, the larger community of his origin by doing so. And then, of course, you know as well, he restored buildings in his home, I don't know if you call it a town, maybe a village, his home village. You know. <laughs> Interesting enough, I drove through Drake all through my high school years on the way up to Hannibal when I was going to high school there, from Rolla, Missouri, past by his home place all those years and of course didn't know him uh, and then uh, the, you know how small the world is i become pastor of uh, Herman and his pastor and visited the home that I used to drive by and admire when I was much younger in Drake and I could say I really actually knew somebody from Drake all along <laughs> but he was very proud of his origins very proud of, of of course being a graduate of Owensville High School and, uh, and very attuned to the history there. And that's why uh, he uh, maintained those buildings there, restored them and maintained them. And of course, uh, he and uh, Jim dabbled in antiques as well. And so they appreciated the, the, the things of history, which are so very, very important. <clears throat> anyway, and then, of course, here at St. George, when he eventually, uh, after retirement, returned to this uh, location, he associated himself with St. George Parish, and before that, with the parish that he belonged to in uh, St. Louis. All of those things are part of what defined him as an individual, uh, a person who was a gentleman servant to Jesus Christ. And by his association with Christ to other people. And so we certainly have plenty of reason, good reason, to commend him to the Lord, and, uh, to welcome him now into eternal life. I invite you to please stand. We take this moment during the celebration of Holy Mass to offer up some special petitions, primarily, of course, on behalf of Ed, but also all our family members and friends who are deceased have gone into eternal life. We respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our brother Ed, who was given the promise of eternal life in baptism. Lord, give him now communion with your saints forever. We pray to the Lord. Ed ate the bread of eternal life, the body of Christ. Raise him up, Lord, now at the last day, we pray the Lord. We pray for all our deceased brothers and sisters, our relatives, our friends, for all who are close to us and good to us during their lifetime with us. Lord, give them the reward of their goodness, we pray the Lord. 
We pray for all who have died in the hope of rising again. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your presence. We pray to the Lord. And we pray in a special way for all health care providers at the manor in Owensville and other places as well, particularly who are really putting their lives on the line in service of the aging and sick. We ask you, Lord, to give them the strength and courage to persevere during these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all who have gathered here this afternoon to worship in faith. Lord, make us all one in your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for all our deceased brothers and sisters and bring them to the fullness of your salvation in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated and just listen to the music or if you are familiar with the song, join in as the altar is prepared and the gifts are lifted up. Please pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, Heavenly Father, for the salvation of your servant, your adopted son, Ed, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt, doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him now a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we lift up the hymn to your glory, as without end we have claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Please kneel and be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entering willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Shaw, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ed, whom you call today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. George, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please stand. Our Savior Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. For the benefit of those present who are not Catholic during this celebration of Mass, we remember Jesus' last great gift to the apostles before ascending into heaven, the gift of peace. Ordinarily, we would take the opportunity to uh, offer a handshake or a hug or something to people familiar to us, friendly to us, family, etc. We still want to offer some sign of Christ's peace in memory of Jesus on this occasion, so I just invite you to wave or bow to one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be. For those in the choir law, Dave will be coming up to distribute Holy Communion. For those present, this uh, communion will be distributed by Father Bill and myself. Father Bill will be on the Blessed Mother's side and I'll be on the St. Joseph's side. So just come forward. For those who will be receiving, please do so on the hand and then you can lower your mask to receive. Any of the non-Catholics who are guests present with us this, uh, this afternoon, if you cross your arms in this fashion, Father Bill and I will know to pray a blessing over you. One of Ed's good friends was uh, Father Bill Devo when he was pastor here. Please be seated. And um, so he asked that he could be here to come celebrate, and I was certainly glad that he was able to arrange that in his schedule. But now I invite him to come and share some remarks in memory of Ed. That's scary. <laughs> when I first uh, met Ed, it was on the uh, in the vestibule of our other parish that we, Father Monsignor Higley serves as well as I did at the time, uh, Church of the Risen Savior in Rhineland. They were attending Mass that morning, early Mass, and uh, they came towards me, greeting me like many people were at that time, because I was new. And Ed, I didn't know Ed at all, and he looked at me and he said, well, we have something in common. We need to talk about that. I said, oh, what's that? It's a fine gentleman that I had never met. We have the same doctor. <laughs> I don't go to the doctor. How could that be? And then it was years ago that uh, Dr. Uh, Ed Kinsella uh, was Ed's doctor for many years, and he happened to be a surgeon, or not a surgeon, but a doctor that diagnosed me with a stomach issue. That was the days before uh, HIPAA because they must have had a conversation about the new pastor uh, and Herman and was eager to share stories that he knew about uh, Dr. Kinsella for many, many years. And then so began a, a deep and lasting relationship that one that I can say truly very proud of over these many years, nearly 20 years now. Two things come to mind when I think about Ed Langford and I try to keep this short. It has to be hospitality, and the other word has to be laughter. 
and everything in between uh, uh, centered around deep and long conversations. Even in the last uh, few years when I've been away, I would always have to kind of pinch myself and be angry that I didn't have enough time to stop and visit Ed and Jim when they were in Drake. I knew pretty much they were spending most of the time there, and someone said, oh, you should stop, you should stop. But you don't understand. You can't stop and break for just five or ten minutes. It has to be five or ten hours. <laughs> because the conversation would go on late into the night, and I would be making my way to the car, and Ed and Jim would be following me, <laughs> and talking and talking and talking, sharing one more story. Two stories, and, and again, I will quit. Uh, the one story that I heard ad nauseum from Ed over and over, at every gathering where there was a party and there was uh, 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 drinks involved, I would get up and try to offer uh, help and assistance to Jim. I'll help you make a drink, but tell me what you want. He was pretty particular. He said, oh no, Ed will make my drink. And Ed would look at me with his eyes over his glasses and say, dear God, I think I'll be on my deathbed. And Jim will say, Ed, get up and fix me a drink. <laughs> That happened almost every time we gathered. The final story was a story that when we get together, we talked a lot. I don't know that we were deep in spirituality at those times, but there was one time I prayed very heavily. And that was a time that several of us were invited uh, to uh, Jim's condo in uh, Clayton, and we were going out to dinner. That meant that Ed was going to drive. I was in the back seat with three or four other people before social distancing, and we were clinging to each other because I had never been in that garage where you go down a hump and up a hump and head towards the garage door, and I thought, oh dear God, here we go. And it would open magically, and another bump and away we would fly with Ed's foot on the accelerator. Always off to yet another adventure and another time to laugh and to share stories. So I am grateful to Ed for the, the great uh, spirit of hospitality. He uh, lived one of my uh, favorite things to do when it comes to being charitable to one another, reaching out to each other. One more little thing, the last time I visited, I looked at uh, them as I came in the house and I noticed looking around, it was uh, uh, the middle of summer and I said, oh, I'm so heartened to know I'm a great Christmas person. You had your Christmas decorations up already. We never took them down. <laughs> so I'll think of that, and I'll think of that house, and I'll think of my visits, and I'll think about the drives to and from St. Louis, our many dinners together, our times of just sharing story after story. God rest the soul of Ed Langenberg. I do want to thank everybody here today to celebrate Ed Langenberg, who was very special to our family as a son, a brother, an uncle, and dear friend. And due to the unfortunate circumstances surrounding our moms and Jim's health, they are not able to be with us, and they are missed because they both meant so much to our uncle. <clears throat> Ed touched so many lives in Gascony County and in St. Louis, because of his kindness and warmth and generosity. Ed was known as Sonny to all of us and everyone he grew up with. He was our mother's little brother. Geneva was six years old when little Edwin was born, and he would tell us many times as he laughed that she wasn't too thrilled when he was born because now she wasn't going to be the center of attention. And we would all just say, it's true. <laughs> Soon she quickly got over that and loved her little brother and they grew very close and always remained that way. When he was in Gascony Manor, every phone call I had with him, as ill as he was, would always ask about, he would always ask about mom and she was the same way. She loved him so much. <sighs> okay, deep breath. My sisters and I 
have so many cherished childhood memories in the country, as we would call it, um, and especially at Christmas. Sonny would always chop down the tree in the living room, and the wonderful aroma from the tree, along with our grandmother's cooking, who was Nana, was pretty magical. He worked hard to make it that way for all of us. And the magic continued with his great nieces and nephews and two great, great nephews. They too had those memories of our festive day and wonderful dinner over the holidays, which he made, by the way. He was a very good cook and loved to cook. And so I'm grateful that they got to experience that. And also, he would sit at the piano and play Christmas songs, and we all sang. It was so, so special. Drake was his home and where his roots were. He was passionate about his heritage and wanted to make sure that my sisters and I knew about our family history. We, he would share countless stories and events about our grandparents and great-grandparents with us. And every time any one of us would go by Drake, we had to remember to bring our glasses because he had many pictures to show us of Nana and her sisters and brothers and relatives and friends. It meant so much to him and, of course, to us as well. Ed moved to St. Louis when he was 18 to attend Washington University. And after graduating and obtaining his CPA, he worked for Arthur Anderson and traveled quite a bit, but always ended up in Drake on weekends with our family to visit our beloved Nana. Our uncle was such a part of our lives growing up, and selfishly, I was so afraid that he was going to get married, have children, and then we would have to share him with them. But that's how much we loved him. Ed loved his many cousins and their families and talked about them frequently and always stayed in touch with them. He enjoyed family reunions and always wanted us to be there because to him, family was so important. Our uncle had a very successful professional life in St. Louis and made many friends who admired him, not only for his intelligence, but also for all his attributes such as his sincere, his sincere kindness and integrity. Ed and Jim had been friends for over 50 years, and we shared our life with Jim too, as he became a part of our family. After Ed's retirement, Ed moved to his home in Drake, which he had renovated so beautifully. And together they bought the general store that our grandfather and great-grandfather had, and they were able to restore it with its original displays and cabinets. Ed and Jim then had an antique store, which they enjoyed so much. And that was enjoyable for Ed because he, of, of his love and knowledge of antiques. He and Jim met so many friends that had homes in Gasconade County that were from St. Louis. They had a wonderful social life and friendship with them and was always so proud to introduce us to them. Ed then became involved with the Gasconade Historical Society, which he enjoyed being part of. This fit right into his passion and knowledge of Gasconade County, and he enjoyed meeting everyone who shared that same passion. Ed and Jim then joined St. George Catholic Church, which they enjoyed being parishioners of. They, of course, made many friends here and talked about them all the time and treasured their friendships. Father Bill was the priest at the time, and they became good friends, and Ed and Jim became involved with the church's annual Christmas tree display which Father Bill would put together to raise funds for St. George. When Father Bill went to another parish, Monsignor came and he became friends with them, of course, we didn't have to. <laughs> but soon after, he, he, he started, that's when their health started to decline, and Monsignor was so gracious to come to Drake to give them communion, which they appreciated so much. And they talked about all <laughs> I could go on all day about our dear uncle because there are so many lives he touched in his 87 years, and we were all so proud of the man he was. Ed had such a full and meaningful life. He gave us, he gave so much to our family and friends, and we are all blessed to have had him in our lives. 
he will be sorely missed. Thank you very much, Debbie, for that wonderful tribute. We appreciate the sharing of all that information and great memories. And also, Father Bill, thank you very much for your friendship to Ed and your memories as well. After the closing prayer, we have a part of the Mass that we refer to as the um, commendation, prayer of commendation. When we really do exercising the spiritual work of mercy, pray for the living and the deceased, we pray that, uh, to God our Father on behalf of Ed and commend him uh, for all the good that he accomplished in his life that we know of and that we're proud of being a part of and uh, ask him now to be welcomed among the angels and the saints. So during this ritual, uh, I just want to bring to your attention that we use incense. Now that's a time-honored tradition of the Catholic Church, but it uh, precedes Jesus Christ. It was used by the Jewish uh, people in their temple in Jerusalem, and also even in pagan temples as well. And it was used in temples to honor God, Yahweh, or the gods. It was a way to show reverence and respect to them. But it was also used because the psalmist says, May our pr prayers rise up to you, O Lord, like incense. So uh, the visual uh, sight of smoke rising up is a sign of our prayers going up to heaven on behalf of Jim, or me Ed. So, but why do we incense his body? Because on the day of his baptism, as with all of us who are Christian, God came to dwell inside of us. And each and every one of us is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we incense his mortal remains out of reverence and respect and memory that throughout his life he was a temple of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Lord, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey of faith, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Ed may come to the eternal table of Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Ed again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ed in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Ed in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, your adopted son, Ed, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem.
but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Ed. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he always desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, may your mercy join him to the angels of heaven. And we ask this for Christ our Lord. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need. Strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. And we ask this for Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And may the love of God and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ bless and console us. Gently wipe every tear from your eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.